I'm going to tell you a story. And I don't know why I feel so strong. I'm going to tell you this story. But I felt this morning I'm going to tell you this story because I could go a lot of directions with blindness here. Stay with me. I could go a lot of directions with blindness. There's blindness in lots of areas. But I'm going to tell you a story because for some reason, Lord knew what mix we'd be this morning. We have a different crowd every Sunday to a degree. Lord knows all that. But I felt strong now to tell you this story. And it's one of my famous dog stories. Okay? Had lots of dog stories over the years. And then I'm going to come back to blindness, and then you're going to see how it all ties in. But there's lots of ways you could go. There could be lots of subpoints under blindness. But I think this one needs addressed for some reason. Okay? I was walking a week ago on my five-mile prayer walk. And this hound dog began following me. And I've come to the conclusion a week later that I think I may know who this dog belongs to. I was concerned because it, on immediately seeing this dog, I knew that he was a valuable dog. Just by looking at him, I don't know a lot about hunting dogs, but I could tell he was a valuable dog. And he had a, he had a collar. And he was just so happy to see me. I wasn't real happy to see him because he began following me. But he was so happy to see me. He was just coming up out of the weeds, and he saw me, and he's just dancing with glee. And at first, I'm like, get out of here. Go, go, go on. And he just tuckered down, you know, and put his ears real close like I heard his feelings. And I felt kind of bad. <laughs> so I began to be nice to him. So lo and behold, he's going to follow me. So sure enough, he follows me one mile, two miles, and I'm thinking, oh, shoot, this is a dog somebody's lost, doesn't have a home, and he's wanting to follow me and go home with me. I was kind of embarrassed because neighbors had come by, and he wouldn't get out of the middle of the road. And people look at me like, move your dog. And I'm like, it's not my dog. <laughs> so I tried a new way. I went, I think that body language illustrated that's not my dog. But people would come to a dead stop, and... And I'm not exaggerating, he would just walk right in the middle of the road, but he was just as friendly a dog as he could be. And I realized in a short period of time that this dog is going to follow me home, and the more I walked with him, the more I realized that he was pretty excited about the potential. <laughs> I could see that. He would run off down, sniff around stuff the river, but he's always checking out where I am. And he'd run up out of the ditch, and he'd kind of look at me like I'm back, and I was thinking, oh shoot, I thought you got lost. But he, but he did. He, he was excited, and I think he saw the potential, and I'm going somewhere with this. I think he saw the potential of, I could get a happy home out of this deal. I kind of like this guy. And, and, and you know what the truth is? He, he hit the jackpot, and he didn't know it, because I got a 60-foot front porch with rocking chairs out there and a nice place for a dog to hang out, and there's other animals there on our little farm, and Pam and I are soft enough, hard in our old age, we'd be real nice to him, and we'd make sure he was fed real well, and I think he kind of figured out as we went along, I think I'm going to stick with this guy. The third mile, the third mile, I'm going somewhere with this. I believe the Lord gave me this. Do you know that God will speak to you through a hound dog? God will speak to you through a breeze coming through the trees? He'll speak to you through a cornfield? Are you too cluttered and too addicted to your cell phone and all the other clutter in our life? I want to be sensitive to the gentle breezes of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to have to have a hurricane to get my attention. I want to hear, oh, that's the Lord. Anoint your eyes. Time with God will make you sensitive to the Holy Spirit. It isn't about legalism. Oh, I have to have my devotions an hour and a half a day, and I got to, if I don't, it should be at least an hour and 20 minutes. It's not about legalism. It's about that if I choose to be in the remnant, Lord, I want fervency, and I begin spending time with God, you'll begin picking up the gentle breezes. I won't pick up lessons from dogs. I've missed a lot of them. I'm sure there's a lot of times God trying to show me something. I missed it. On with the story. On about the fourth mile coming up the stretch, Back to 150 that we live on. There's a nice, beautiful stretch comes up the hill and the canopy of trees over it. All of a sudden, he stops in the middle of the road and he looks over at a tree. I don't know a lot about coon dogs, but I learned some things that day. This is a well-trained dog, I think. He stops right in the middle of the road and I kept walking. He didn't come any farther. 
I kept walking. I'm looking. I'm thinking, he's been hanging on to me like I'm his best friend. What happened? And he goes over at this tree, sticks his nose up, and starts going, boo, boo. I thought, I didn't hear him bark like that before. And I thought, oh, I don't know much about coon hunting. Guys in the church that have coon hunted, I thought, there's a coon in that tree. And I've heard guys say, I've never coon hunted, but I've heard guys say they changed their bark. Is that true? Okay. He sits down there. He just wiggles his tail. He'd look over at me. I'm getting farther and farther away. I did stop to watch him a little bit. He's boop, boop, boop. I'm not doing a very good job imitating him, but I'm trying. <laughs> and I'm looking at him, and he just staying right there. He just staying right there. And I go on 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet. We're almost a quarter mile. I see him way down there. When I look back at him, he looks over. And he's sitting like this, you know, like dogs sit on their haunches. And his tail, even though it's on the pavement, is wagging. I think he's saying, I see you, buddy. I see you, buddy. Boo! Boo! And right then, I stopped on the road. And I said, Lord, you are saying something to me. What is it? And he said, that dog has the opportunity to go to a wonderful home and be blessed but he's too tied to something he's been taught. And he can't let go of it. And you know what? I walked till I was completely out of sight. And he's still sitting there. For all I know, he's still there. <laughs> he never came with me after that. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's a powerful thought. Lord, don't let me miss anything you're trying to say. And the Lord said it again. The Lord said, that dog has the opportunity, and he knows it, and he's happy about it, to go to a home where he's got a big porch, and he's got people to look after him that'll feed him, but he's so tied to something he's taught, and he can't leave it. He was taught that when you coon a tree, when you tree a coon, you do not leave. And I began saying, Lord, is there anything that's been embedded in my mind that is blinding me? And there's something you want to tell me. Am I making sense? Let me elaborate on that. We're not picking on anybody. There's blindness in every area. Had a friend a while back that came to me, tears in his eyes. And he said, Tom, I hear you talk about your personal relationship with God and walking by the river and God talking to you, and I want that so bad. And I felt sorry for him. Tears came up in his eyes. But he said, I can't seem to get it because I was raised for the first seven years of my life taught that you have to go through a priest. I can't be personal with Jesus. Help me. Begin praying for me. I don't want to be blinded by something I was taught. Then maybe you've been blinded and you were raised in some evangelical church and there's a lot of them in this county and you had legalism ground into you till it was to the core in every cell of your body and you thought you had to live by a checklist and you want to have freedom in Christ and you want to enjoy the Holy Spirit in your life and, and you want to buy into abundant life but you can't get past it. <laughs> I could have gone a lot of directions on this subject of blindness but God told me to tell the dog story because I think we have churches full of people that are locked into stuff they've been taught that isn't really scriptural. And they can't get past it. And God's saying, I want to give you life and give it more abundantly. And I want to take you to a house where you can sit on the porch and Tom and Pam's going to look after you and feed you. And there's other horses, on, other animals on the place and you can run and romp and have. And there's 18 acres there and you can have a great time. But I'm sitting here by this tree, barking up that tree, howling, hello, howling some belief I've got or something up this tree and I can't get past it and God is going on and saying, I'm calling you, I'm calling you, and you can't get past it. Does that make sense? Now let me go another direction with that. And I'm just scratching the surface. This is a powerful thought. It's an inspired thought. Let me go another direction with that. Who here, it's a personal limitation. 
you grew up in abuse, and you were told you were worthless for years. And God's trying to tell you that you're worth the world to Him, but you can't accept it because you're barking up that same tree all the time. <laughs> Are you with me? Somebody did a horrible sexual abuse. Forbid that such a thing would happen. I can't say the word without crying because I've counseled people, and it's horrible damage. But you're still barking up that same tree of I'm worthless, and God's saying, come on, i got a home for you. i got abundant life for you. But you're still barking up that same tree because you can't get past what you thought. Are you with me? And I think this blindness... As God began opening my mind to blindness, I began seeing it every direction. Anoint your eyes with eye salve. It's time to do a new thing. If you're here and you've been through a miserable childhood, and you're, you're not worthless. Jesus would have sent His Son to die for you if you were the only person. Are you with me? But you can buy into something you've been taught and told. And I, I, I had a pitiful feeling. I knew something was of God in this lesson about the dog because of the sadness I had. I don't care about a stray dog for heaven's sakes. Got more bigger fish to fry than that. As I walked away from that dog, I had this heavy sadness come over me. And that's what made me say, Lord, you're saying something. I had a heavy sadness come over me as I watched that dog. And he'd wag, and if a dog could smile, he was. He'd look at me and then wag his tail on the pavement just sitting there, but he could not leave that tree because he was locked in to something he'd been taught. And he couldn't get past it. And I think churches are full of people that have locked in to something they've been taught. Maybe they're locked into overemphasis on grace. We talked about legalism, so let's be fair. There's churches that have overemphasis on grace and people never come to God's favor because they don't live to honor Him and don't demand purity of themselves. And so Jesus is saying, come on, <laughs> it's pretty up here, come on, <laughs> come up the road with me, I want to give you abundant life and all you do you honor me, I want to give you favor, I want to give you blessing. No, I'm going to keep doing this same thing. I'm going to just keep getting on the net and doing this same thing. Well, if you always do, what you've always done, you will always get what you've always got. You're going to get the same old stuff. It's time to do a new thing. What's he saying to the last day's church? Do we need to run off and be scared? I told you this message is in two sections. And it looked like it didn't go together. But they do. We need to recognize the bigger picture. That's what the first part of the message was. The bigger picture is the world stage. We need to see where we are. Then let's hone in with our binoculars and let's zoom in and let's realize, okay, what do we do? Buy into refinement. Number one I had up there. Pursue purity. Anoint your eyes. And I got others, but it's too late. Anoint your eyes with eye salve. And I really believe that I'm supposed to ask you this and leave it. Oh, I thought I put that on there. guess I didn't. What have you, when you leave the service, and we're going to quit directly, when you leave the service day, what have you locked in on and believed that's not true? Only God can show you that. Lord, is there anything, I don't want to move into this new season and be missing something because I'm just locked in. This is how I look at it. That isn't in my box. I don't care. No. Is there anything I'm locked in on? Now, there are certain truths that are just foundational, okay? And I preached on that three or four weeks ago. There are certain truths that are just foundational. And, and so it doesn't matter what church you go to or anything else. There are certain truths. Jesus is the way. There aren't 14 Jesuses. You know, Jesus, there, there, there are certain things. But I do think that this is huge in church. I think a lot of the blindness in our churches today has to do with we're locked in on things that we've been taught, either about ourselves and we believed it, or it can be bad theology. What is it that you've bought into? And I think the Holy Spirit will take it from there. And I even felt a little checked about going any farther than that. What have you bought into that's limiting you from what God? I have written here, Lord, is there anything, a prayer, I have written in my notepad for myself. I'm challenging you to do the same thing I do. Lord, is there anything... I'm locked into that is limiting me from being what you want me to be.
Have I believed that I'm worthless? Have I believed that, I'm, that I don't matter? Has the abuse and brokenness in my life left me feeling a failure? And I've believed it. And, and, and I really do want to go to the home prepared for me. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there, you may be also. I go to prepare a mansion, John 14. I'd like to follow you on up the road, Lord, but I can't leave this tree. I'm still howling up this same tree. <laughs> Lord, what would you show me? In what area am I blind? <laughs> 